Hi, and welcome to my workshop. Prepare yourselves for some slanishy goodness, because today we're painting 500 points of Emperor's Children. <laughs> Feast your eyes with this perfectly lined up shot as I go through all the minis in the squad. So first of all we've got the big guy, a Hellbrute armed with two fists and heavy flamers, followed by one obliterator. Then we've got uh, the leader of the whole party, a sorcerer in Terminator armor, armed with a combi bolter and a force stave. Then we've got our regular troops, which are 10 heretic Astartes from the Shadow Spear box set. So we've got a bit of a mixed bag. Some of them have bolt guns and the others have a bolt pistol and a chainsaw. I primed them with um, Stylerunner's Black Primer with a, a little bit of a zenithal made with a white stylerunner's primer and the armor got a treatment with a gloss varnish why you'll find out when we move to the next step so these are two main characters of our story today the main color will be nebula copper from green stuff world it's one of those color shifting paints. So, depending on the lights, our Keretic Astartes will look either orange ish or kind of magenta ish. So, uh, the reason why they were primed uh, or covered with gloss varnish was because it actually improves the effect of the paint. So, I applied this color to the whole armor of our space marines, the terminator armor of our sorcerer, as well as uh, the panels um, on our Hellbrute and on the obliterator. So unfortunately this paint has a really really bad coverage, so it took several layers to actually get a decent coverage. Well, it obviously depends on what you want to achieve. I wanted to achieve like a full, like really saturated color without black showing from underneath. So they looked like really new and polished. So I had to apply probably six layers, six thin layers to get uh, the result that I wanted. So it took a while, unfortunately. Two hours, but they were done. After completing all the panels, I applied uh, Vallejo Glorious Gold to all the trim. It will complement those panels and the armor very nicely. And then... You mean five hours later? Honestly. Painting trim on Chaos Space Marines is the worst. Actually, there's one thing that's worse. Edge highlighting loyalists. Okay, moving on. On to flesh. So what you're seeing there is my experiment that I uh, tried uh, before. It was using scale 75 paints. Unfortunately, I didn't like the effect and I couldn't get the consistency right. You know, sometimes you get that with scale 75 paints, especially if you're not very experienced, like me, for example. Uh, yeah, they'll drag you through hell. Anyway, I kind of decided to redo the whole flesh. Uh, this time using Vallejo model color burned red as my shade. And then Vallejo model color brown sand as my main tone. And Vallejo game color elfic flesh as a highlight and I really like that effect it worked out much better and it took me about 20 minutes 
to do that. Whereas beforehand, I struggled for about two hours putting scale 75s on. But unfortunately, that happens. It actually rendered the zenithal completely useless, but I more or less remembered uh, where it was and I used it as a guide for the highlights and that's another thing that you can do so for example if you don't use really transparent paints or inks you can always use your zenitals as a guide on where to put your highlights so weapons next I painted all the glorious guns using uh, three paints First, I used a base coat of Vallejo Metal Color Steel. Then I followed with a dry brush of Vallejo Metal Color Silver to finish off with a final dry brush of Scale 75 Speed Metal. And as you can see, I am using makeup brushes for dry brushing, mainly because they create a much better texture. It's not as powdery and as dull as uh, dry brushing with uh, your standard brushes. A lot finer, much better, and I really like the, the way the guns look. They looked really polished, especially after applying that last layer of uh, Scale 75 speed metal. Really, really good, and I always recommend using makeup brushes for all your dry brushing. Then I also painted all the bullets using a metal color copper, that's from Vallejo as well, and a Vallejo metal color gold, and I used gold for the casings. In case you're wondering why I haven't used gold for the trim, it's because I didn't like the greenish tint of it, and I do believe that um, Game Color Glorious Gold looks much better with the color of uh, the armor. And now we are officially done with the metallics. So I replaced my water and cracked open my wet palette to begin painting all the tabards and our sorcerer's cape. So I wanted to kind of imitate the idea of the color shift effect. So I used Vallejo Modern Color Turquoise as my base coat and I painted all the tabards and the cape. Then I mixed a little bit of Vallejo Game Air Warlord Purple sort of one to one ratio with a turquoise to create the shadows or to paint the deeper recesses of uh, the fabrics. And as a last step, I mixed some Vallejo Game uh, Golden Yellow with a turquoise and I dry brushed a few highlights on all the raised areas. And it created an interesting effect that I really liked, so I stuck with it. So I wanted to make the gems and eyes or the lenses kind of a mutation of sorts. So I decided to paint them, you know, the same color. So I used Vallejo Mother Color Turquoise again to paint all the lenses in the helmets, all the eyes on the Helbrut and all the gems on all the pieces of armor on pretty much every single character or majority of the characters or models in the range and then i used vallejo game color jade green to create a really sort of small highlight those models have a lot of I would say pipes and hydraulics and kind of belts as well. So I wasn't really in the mood for spending hours edge highlighting those or doing like really, really small highlights. So I employed a nifty trick, I would say. 
I base coated all of them with Vallejo Model Air Pale Blue Grey and then I used Vallejo Black Ink slightly watered down with a little bit of glaze medium to make it more transparent and the effect was pretty good definitely saved me a lot of time to paint leather quickly i employed a hmm, an old method of mine that i use most often i base coated all the holsters belts and straps with vallejo game uh, khaki then i followed with a fairly light uh, dry brush of vallejo gamer uh, bone white after that i applied a watered down vallejo sepia ink and i followed up with yet another dry brush but this time with vallejo game color white and i finished off with another coat of vallejo sepia ink and depending on the amount of ink or the heaviness of the dry brush you can achieve different results obviously the heavier the dry brush the more worn out the leather is uh, the more ink you add the darker the leather is so you can adjust this kind of technique to what you want to achieve i went for basically a middle ground so it's not too dark not too light and slightly worn not too much so all the bones skulls and teeth got a very similar treatment to leather so i base coated all of them with vallejo game air khaki follow that up with a dry brush of vallejo game air bone white and i finished them off with vallejo game color white just a very light dry brush at the very tips and so i painted all of them at the same time i mean leather and all the bones oh actually and i decided to paint all the gun handles uh, sort of bone color to kind of imitate that they are made from like ivory or some sort of bone so i think it adds an extra character to the minis as well time for the final special effect some of the minis carry with them plasma weapons so i thought i could make them slightly different so i base coated all the plasma coils with vallejo game color white and then i applied violet fluo from green stuff world to all of them this creates a really nice neon effect that really stands out and you can actually notice the plasma weapons from the distance the only problem is like the previous uh, green stuff world uh, paint that i used its coverage is abysmal so it took me a while probably another six or seven coats to cover the coils completely i used airbrush so i additionally created a poor man's uh, glow effect on the kind of nearby or the close area of the coil itself but it looks quite interesting so after i finished painting uh, the models correcting all the mistakes finishing some bits and bobs you know details i sprayed all of them with gloss varnish to prepare them for the last step or not the last step uh, for washing I am a big fan of uh, oil washes and I use them well basically whenever I can. So my main mixture was uh, magenta and Paris blue. I used them to create sort of a burgundy like color and I applied it to the flesh. 
it created pretty much something similar to what you can see on Slanish models, for example, on the GW website. Well, you can see it on the screen, and basically. So, yeah, I was happy with the result. And then I added a little bit of black to the mixture to make it a lot darker, and I applied it to well, pretty much everything else, like literally everything else. So the armor got shaded really nicely. Uh, the gold looked a little bit more royal, I would say. Even metal looked pretty cool. It actually brought all the colors together, made minis whole, if you know what I mean. I gave the wash probably about half an hour to an hour uh, to dry. And then I used some of my makeup brushes, including a really big one that I never thought I'm going to use. Um, they were dipped in uh, white spirit, just to make them a little bit damp, not soaking wet, but a little bit damp. And then I used basically like a dry brush motion to uh, remove uh, the wash from the raised areas. It pretty much feel felt like a reverse dry brush because I removed paint instead of adding it. So yeah, with that I was able to, um, you know, remove the pools that were left when I wasn't careful and um, sort of showed all the highlights and you can actually really smudge the the oil wash like quite well and create really nice color transitions that enhance what you've done uh, before so i did that and i left all the models to dry pretty much overnight to prepare them for the last step Ooh, home stretch the last bit to make the minis pop a little bit more so I've used um, a variety of materials like my kind of a homemade dip basing mix that has a tile grout, um, coconut fiber substrate, uh, sawdust log and some stones together. And then I added um, a small amounts of uh, lichen or lichen, which you prefer. Uh, and I used some uh, foam flock, like smaller bits and bigger bits. And I used uh, pigments as well to kind of blend the terrain together to kind of create um, really, really nice scenic bases. And of course, I painted the rims, yeah, rims, yeah, rims and bases are black. And I actually varnished the minis once more. But this time I applied a gloss varnish to the armor and a matte varnish to all the other bits. So, there they are. All done and ready. So guess, how long did they took? Actually my goal was to paint them in about 10 hours. So do you think I've achieved that? No, not even close. They took me about 22 hours to finish which i think it's a i would say fairly decent result for the time spent and i am happy with what i managed to achieve um so let's finish off with a 360 b-roll of the minis so that you can look at them and nitpick all the mistakes that i've made and i've made plenty and i'll see you in the next video bye Oh, by the way, and I drilled those gun barrels in the end. So, if you saw them during the video, made an angry comment about them because you were impatient, the joke's on you.